there are many security threats all around us, especially in the digital area. So it's never a bad idea to be a step ahead. So in this video, I want to show you not only 5 or 10, but 15 different settings which have a direct impact on the security and privacy on your Mac. Let's start off with one simple switch. If you prefer to browse more anonymously and don't like targeted ads, you can easily limit ad tracking on the privacy and security tab in your system settings. Here scroll all the way down to Apple advertising and disable personalized ads. If you enjoy the offers and ads more tailored to your browsing history, you can always leave this switch on. But I value my own privacy more than that. Later in this video, I'll go to Safari advertisement as well. There is one new amazing tool in macOS Sequoia which can remove all of the annoying ads on the web, even if you keep this Apple advertising active. But now let's go one step back and scroll up in the privacy and security tab. Here go to location services. Click on the details next to system services and here turn off significant location tracking. This will stop your Mac from tracking all of your movements and all the places you have recently visited. But don't worry, these settings won't impact any other location services like your Apple Maps or the Better app. If you actually want to know exactly when your system or any app is requesting your location, you can enable this Show Location icon. Now it will appear in the menu bar and be always showing you. Now let's leave the privacy and security tab and go right above to lock screen. So as you can imagine, you should definitely be using a password at login. No matter if your Mac stays all the time at home, it's good to have it locked to prevent anybody from accessing all of your documents, passwords, accounts, or the other things. But the question is, how often to require the password? You can choose from these options. It can be required from immediately up to never. Now I'll just give you my own suggestions, but we can talk about it more in the comments below. You can share with me how you have it set. I know you might be tempted to set it as immediately, but that seems a little bit inconvenient. Imagine if I just put my computer to sleep, just close the lid and right away remember I just needed to do one, one more, more thing. thing. I will have to unlock it again. For me, five minutes seems just fine especially if it's a desktop computer. If it's your MacBook you are carrying around you all the time, you might consider putting it down to one minute. Anyway, if you have any newer model, you can just unlock it with a Touch ID or using your Apple Watch. So the password will not cause you any troubles, any inconveniences. While we are here, we can look at one more option. You can actually show a message on the lock screen. If this option is dimmed, just click on it and it will prompt you to authenticate the change. As I said, I can do it with the Touch ID. Thanks to that, you can set a note that everybody will see on the lock screen. So in other words, if you forget your Mac somewhere, it's easy for somebody to just open it and see in that note either your phone number or email address where he can contact you to return it. You can type here whatever you want and it can be really, really long note. Let's move on and have a look at Wi-Fi settings. There is one new switch in macOS Sequoia, but let's start with the basics. All the way down here, select Ask to join the networks. When you are not connected to any known network, the Mac will always keep on searching for available Wi-Fi and if this switch is not activated, it might automatically connect to any available network, even those with a very low security. Using this toggle, it will always have to ask you before joining any unknown network. So it's really useful to have it activated. Also keep in mind that sometimes you may join the networks which you don't fully trust, like maybe at some coffee shop or the airport. So every time you join a new network like that, make sure to go into the details of that network and maybe turn off automatically joining it if you are not so sure about this Wi-Fi security. Once we are here, also activate the new macOS Sequoia feature, which is called Rotating Wi-Fi Address. By the way, I talked about this in my other video, where I showed you all of these secret new features in macOS Sequoia. 
So check it out right after we are done with all of the privacy and security stuff. After you activate this, your Wi-Fi address will from time to time change. That will reduce the chances of your Wi-Fi address being tracked, which is an easy way to help increase your privacy. But be also aware of the negative effect of this option, especially if you are playing online games. It's recommended to have fixed Wi-Fi and fixed IP address. If this change happens, it might actually disconnect you from the game. And trust me, there is nothing more annoying than that if you are just about to win a race or win another battle. Alright, let's get serious again. Now even if you have the Wi-Fi set correctly, you might sometimes download the wrong file or it's downloaded automatically. It would not be such a big problem because you can straight away delete the file. But Safari is set by default to automatically open these files after downloading, which is not only annoying, but it might be potentially dangerous. For this we need to leave system settings just for a moment and go to Safari. Here open the menu on top and go to Safari settings. On the first general tab you can find an option to open save files after downloading. So in other words, if you download a picture or PDF, anything Apple considers safe, it will automatically open it straight away. It's not so hard to click on it in your downloads folder in the dock and open it yourself whenever you want. So go ahead and tick it off. Once we are here in Safari, go to privacy settings and make sure that this option is actually ticked on. Hide IP address from trackers. In general, Safari is already blocking trackers from profiling you across websites. I'll show you that in Safari privacy report in a second. But with the ability to hide your IP address, trackers cannot determine your location, neither your browsing history. Which is really good. But you are still leaving the traces on all of the websites you are visiting. Well, we can prevent even that. If you are subscribed to any iCloud Plus plan, which most of us are, you can also extend this feature to stop websites from tracking you as well. It's called Private Relay. The option will appear here, but first we need to activate it in system settings. So let's go back to the other desktop and set it up here first. Go to Apple account, choose iCloud and here click on private relay. Once it's activated, you will find out that this changed in Safari settings as well. Now you can choose to hide your IP address from trackers and websites as well. Private relay is very useful because it enables total IP masking from both the trackers and the websites. So now nobody will be able to see what sites you are visiting not single party, not even Apple. It's worth mentioning that Private Relay also masks your IP address from profiling you across different applications on your device. So not only on Safari browser, but you will be safe in any other games and applications you are using. Now to finish with Safari, I mentioned the privacy report. You can't actually set anything here. It's more like an information showing you the number of trackers which were prevented from profiling you. But it's still useful. Usually you will see quite a large number here. If the number on your Mac is much lower than that, double check in Safari settings that you have the cross-site tracking prevention active. You will also find it on the privacy tab, same as the IP address. As you can imagine, this feature is not available on Chrome or other browsers. Which is obvious, because Google's main business is coming from ads. So if you use Chrome on the Mac, be aware of the large number of people who are following you on every website. Regardless of all of these settings, you will still see ads on the web. Look at this website for example. Basically half of it are just ads. So to avoid accidentally clicking on any of them and eventually visiting unwanted websites or download the wrong file, it's better to just remove these banners completely. And Safari can do it now. Click on this button in the menu bar and select Hide Distracting Items. And now I am in full control over that and with every click I can remove any section of a website. It appears to be even more ads on top of this. They were probably blocked already by the previous tracking preventive settings we did. Now the web looks much cleaner. And it will stay like this even after refreshing the page. 
Now we are done with Safari, but not with this video. There is a lot more to see. If you have already learned something new, please leave a like on this video. It's a small thing for you, but it can mean a lot to my channel in order to reach more people and share these tips among them. But now back to system settings. This time go to software update. You can find it under general tab. Here click on the info icon next to automatic updates. If you want to be safe from all the security threats, you should keep your Mac up to date. So I recommend you have all of these checkboxes selected. Remember it's not just important to keep your system up to date to get all of the security patches, but also all of your applications you are using, they should be in the newest versions as well. Despite my recommendations, you can see that I have these two ticked off. But the only reason for that is because I want to check what is new in the updates in order to create these videos for you. And I would never untick this last one. Install security responses and system files. It's an important option which allows macOS to install security updates on the background, even without requiring a system restart. This feature is fairly new to macOS, so make sure you have it ticked on as well. To be more on the safe side with the apps we are putting on our Mac, we can block installing all of the applications from outside of Mac App Store, because applications from there are managed by Apple for higher security. And we can actually do that on the Mac. You can find this option here under Privacy and Security, nearly on the bottom of this page. In the drop down menu, just select Applications only from the App Store. You can switch this anytime. For example, if somebody else is using your Mac, you can block them from installing some apps outside of the Mac App Store. But for yourself, you can still keep it active and change it to trusted developers. Because there are still so many applications missing on the App Store. Now let's go back to the top level of system settings and go to general again. Here, you will find one more tab for sharing. To make it simple, you should have everything turned off here. Even if this is off, I can still share the files between my devices. I can still connect to any external screen. It has nothing to do with that. But if any of these switches are on, basically anybody on the same network can see your computer. They can see your name of the computer and even stuff you have shared. It is not such a big security problem, but it's better to stay on the safe side and disable it as well. Let's finish this video with Siri. Hey Siri, how are you? Well, you might not be so happy anymore after I disable you a little bit. Let's go now to Siri in system settings. And here you should see one option. Allow Siri when locked. There are people capable of accessing certain things just by using Siri. And there is really no reason for you to be using that on the lock screen. So I would really recommend to switch this off. It was a fairly long video. I believe you have been already doing a lot of these techniques. If not, then hopefully you have learned something new. There is one more thing you should secure for yourself now. And that is to get all of the tips and tutorials in the future. And you can do that by simply clicking on the subscribe button. Because I have a lot more things to show you. So see you in the next video.